Once again, everyone, it's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. We call this uh, video Weather for Weather Geeks. It's the Valley's most in-depth, detailed, geeky weather forecast video. We're going to focus on the severe weather threat coming up tomorrow. We're going to talk about uh, the forecast overall for the next several days. But I wanted to uh, start out this evening with a little weather history because, of course, today is May 31st, and longtime Valley residents know what that means. It is the 37-year anniversary of the most infamous tornado and tornado outbreak in our region's history back on May 31st, 1985. Of course, uh, the F5 that touched down near Ravenna and then uh, moved through Newton Falls and Niles over towards Wheatland, PA. Uh, this gets most of the buzz and it's what most people remember from that day, but this was part of a swarm of tornadoes and some higher end tornadoes that impacted a lot of our region, including an F2, the touchdown in Columbiana County, the circulation lifted for a bit and then it touched back down in western PA. It became an F3 in Beaver County. We had an F3 in northwestern Trumbull. We had an F4 that touched down in northeastern Trumbull and kind of skirted the Crawford-Mercer line and uh, moved over towards the Oil City area. And then well to our east, not on this map, but we had a very strong tornado that went through the forests of west central PA that was very, very strong as well. In fact, uh, an F5 tornado uh, did occur uh, in this zone right in here, north of State College, PA. Um, this is thankfully a pretty rural area, but this was one of the one of the bigger tornadoes that occurred that day in addition to the F5 that we had locally. And then there was a, a swarm associated with this whole day up in Ontario. And this was probably the biggest tornado outbreak on record in the province of Ontario, Canada back on May 31st, 1985. Now this year, thankfully so far, has been pretty quiet in the tornado department in our television viewing area. We've had no tornadoes. We've had no tornado warnings so far in 2022. We've had a handful of warnings down to the south and also to the north and west. And I would not expect with tomorrow's setup uh, to have any tornado warnings because it just does not look like a tornado setup for tomorrow. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Today, the hottest day of the year so far, 88 officially at the Youngstown Warren Airport. We reached 90 in Akron and down in New Philly and Tuscarawas County. Hopkins Airport in Cleveland stopped just shy of 90, although Burke Lakefront Airport, right along the lake, uh, with a screaming southwest wind, did touch 90 this afternoon. All right, it's May 31st, and it's also the end of May and the end of meteorological spring. And uh, the, the spring season was a little bit wetter than the average at 11.42 at the airport. That's about three quarters of an inch more than the average for the year so far, a little over two and a half inches above uh, normal precipitation. The month of May also wetter than the average by about a half an inch, 4.26 at the airport. Some of us have had closer to six inches worth of rain in the month of May. June 1st is tomorrow, so let's take a look at the uh, final June outlook. And I'll tell you, uh, there's, not a, uh, there's not a strong signal either way for us at this point. What do we mean by that? Well, it may come out in the wash as pretty close to average. It may be a little warmer than average, maybe a little cooler than average, but extremes seem pretty likely. Will this be one of the hottest Junes on record? That seems very unlikely. Will it be one of the coolest Junes on record? That seems very likely. It'll probably be somewhere in the middle. I think the first half of the month has a better chance of being on the cooler side, or at least close to average. And then if we get some high heat again, kind of like we did today, that would be a little more likely, I think, during the second half of June. The first half does not look like, it doesn't look like a pattern to me that will support a lot of unusual early summer heat. Precipitation-wise, also, we're not looking at a strong signal here for an excessively wet month or an excessively dry month uh, across all of Ohio and Pennsylvania. So, again, kind of a neutral signal at this point. So, if you're uh, into betting on, on weather futures... Uh, the smart money at this point is on it being somewhere pretty close to average, both in terms of temperatures and precipitation. Well, on this final evening of May, we have a pretty good uh, space station flyover this evening. This is a little after 10 o'clock. 10.01 is when it starts. It appears about 10 degrees above the horizon in the west-northwest sky. Disappears about five minutes later in the south-southeast sky, reaching a maximum elevation above our heads, 47 degrees. So 90 degrees would be straight up. 47 degrees, about halfway to straight up. So this is a pretty good pass. We'll have a clear sky uh, overhead. Thanks to everyone who uh, chimed in on social media last night. If you uh, were up late, uh, a lot of people did see some meteors. Now, it was not a, a meteor burst like uh, kind of the, the high-end predictions would, would have suggested, but it was a decent enough meteor shower 
uh, visible last night, especially around 12.30 to 1 a.m. All right, cooler air is on the move across the country this evening. This is our cold front right here, 23 degrees cooler than the same time yesterday in Minneapolis. We'll have similar temperature changes around here Thursday as compared to the steamy day we have coming up for tomorrow. The severe weather threat this evening is out here. Severe thunderstorm watches uh, from Wichita down towards Lubbock. Maybe an additional watch that comes out at some point a little farther to the north and east towards uh, St. Louis, eastern Iowa, maybe up closer to Chicago. The severe weather risk tomorrow is elevated across our area with the day two outlook. The Storm Prediction Center did uh, keep our television viewing area in that level two risk on a one to five scale, uh, level two risk. Um, so, you know, the risk is not through the roof, but it is a day that we need to pay attention and stay weather aware. I've adjusted our severe weather window to basically two to seven. I think stuff will try to initialize as early as one to two, closer to the lake shore and up towards Cleveland. That would put some of it down into our viewing area, maybe as early as two o'clock, especially say Trumbull County um, with other areas getting in on the act as we head deeper into the afternoon. The severe weather risk should diminish pretty quickly as we head into early evening, say past about seven o'clock. Uh, wind damage and hail still our number one concerns. There's not a lot of uh, wind shear, especially uh, directional wind shear in the atmosphere tomorrow. N not a lot of changing of the wind direction with height, in other words. So I don't think this is uh, much of a tornado risk tomorrow. But especially early in the uh, severe weather episode tomorrow, there could be some pretty good hail producing storms. Um, so the stuff that gets going initially, say real early, off to our north and west, maybe close to one, maybe closer to our TV viewing area, two to three. Those are the storms that have the best chance of producing some decent sized hail. Otherwise, we're looking at a wind threat. These will be efficient rain producers as well. If you get under more than one storm tomorrow, if you get a couple of storms, might be some localized flooding with these being pretty efficient rain producers, very muggy air mass overhead for tomorrow. So wind and hail, I, I'd rank wind as one and hail as two as far as the risks and I don't have it on this graphic, but uh, yeah, the localized flooding risk would be kind of the third concern out of three. The latest run of our in-house model uh, is pretty far south with the initialization of this stuff tomorrow afternoon. Uh, this does not this is not in very good agreement with a lot of our other high res modeling. So this particular run of the model may not be placing these storms in in the right spot. It would suggest that the risk maybe materializes in our viewing area but gets out of here pretty quickly. Just like with any other piece of information, we're going to pay attention to what this model is saying, but uh, it is uh, quite a bit farther to the south with the initialization of the storms tomorrow than a lot of our other modeling. Uh, Thursday's forecast trending wetter. I mentioned last evening that some of the modeling had this idea, some of the modeling did not. Most of the modeling now is on board with the idea that we're going to have a damp day Thursday, showers around. Now the Scrappers home opener is Thursday evening. Yours truly is throwing out the first pitch. Thursday evening at uh, Eastwood Field. I'm optimistic that the raindrops will be out of there by 6 to 7 p.m. Um, it's going to be a damp morning and afternoon, but uh, we should see things winding down pretty quickly early in the evening. But wow, what a cooler day. After getting well up into the 80s tomorrow, we'll be mostly in the 60s on Thursday, maybe even 50s when it's raining in the afternoon on Thursday. But then things turn around in a big way for Friday and the weekend. Look at the dew point crash that's coming. It'll stay kind of muggy-ish into the day Thursday. But then deep blue skies, cobalt blue skies, and very comfortable weather for Friday, for Saturday, and for Sunday. Just another fantastic stretch of early summer weather tracking our way just in time for the first weekend of June. But tomorrow is going to be an interesting day with a couple of uh, rowdy storms, a likelihood. So uh, if we have some uh, severe weather threats and severe thunderstorm warnings being issued, you know we'll be doing a live stream on uh, Facebook, on my on my YouTube, and my Twitter. Uh, and we also will be streaming live on WFMJ.com and the Storm Tracker 21 app. And just another reminder, about uh, six weeks ago, I launched a new Facebook page, Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm, my old Facebook page. I lost access to it because I screwed something up and I never could regain access to it. So I have a relatively new Facebook page. If you search for Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm, you'll find me there. In the meantime, thanks for watching tonight, and I'll see you back here to recap all the action tomorrow evening, same time, same place.